So I'll tell you what, Chelsea, I got to just applaud you because if you keep giving us these kind of sets, you're going to make Johnny go back on all of his takes like he just (laughs) did with Miles Sanders. And that's what I'm here for. Right here. So uh, a little fun request from our number one fan, Jacob Blay. We decided we were going to go with a keep trade cut section here. We are not privy, being me and Johnny are not privy to what names that are going to be thrown out here. So we're going to do a little rapid fire. Chelsea's going to give us a few of these keep trade cuts, and we're going to we're going to run through this. I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I know some names are going to come up, and it's going to get real raw and emotional here. This week. Knees weak, arms heavy. <laughs> yeah. Vomit, vomit on your sweater already. Yeah. That's right. So for this first inaugural keep trade cut, I thought I would pull three names that are all undisputed elites in their position, often going the first off the board at each of their role. So if you had okay. all three of these guys, of course you'd want to keep them all. But that is not the game we're playing. <laughs> that is not the game we're playing. You right. got to keep one, trade one, cut one. And the names are Patrick Mahomes. Michael Thomas and Christian McCaffrey. Travis, you want to go first on this one? <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, okay. This is this may be a little cheap, but I'm going to keep Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, career length for quarterbacks versus running backs and wide receivers is longer, so I'm keeping Mahomes. Obviously, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody that can throw the football as skilled as Patrick Mahomes. This guy is really one of the guys that you'd be saying, you know. Screw taking quarterback late. I'm taking Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't matter. I'm going to trade Christian McCaffrey because his his value is at an all-time high. We've talked about how hard it is to repeat at the running back one position. He is the highest his value has ever been. You could get a ransom for Christian McCaffrey right now. And unfortunately, I love Michael Thomas. I love can't guard Mike. But in these, this scenario, I've got to choose one. I'm cutting Michael Thomas. <laughs> Uh, Travis, like when you first started off, uh, saying that you would take Pat Mahomes or keep Pat Mahomes and I'm like, this dude's lost it. He is really lost it for this show. Um, but then as you kept breaking it down, it, it does make a lot of sense. Now I will say to counter your CMC point, And, uh, I just researched this yesterday and found this out. Uh, CMC, I, you know, I uh, do agree that, you know, the chance of him repeating are very, very slim, but what is interesting to know is the vast majority of times, uh, the number one overall pick generally is, is pretty safe as far as their floor. They will still remain an RB one. Uh, we've seen like some of the most dramatic ones, uh, you know, barring injury, of course, but. Like DJ was still a top, uh, you know, 12 RB. He fell quite a bit, but uh, he was still an RB1, you know. Uh, but vast majority of times, they end up being like RB103 or, or RB2 on the year. So CMC is the safest pick, I would I would think, of the top three. Uh, but I don't think he's most likely to return as the RB1. But I think I'm going to go with that long uh, narrative there, and I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to, because of the values and what and what's going on, you can get a ransom for CMC. And so, uh, yeah, you you got to trade him, and then you got to keep Pat Mahomes over a- Michael Thomas, I would think. Um, so, yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. All right, Chelsea, you got, you got any more of these? Yeah, these fun, I got a man. couple more of them. And, uh, Travis, you started the last one off, so we're going to start this one with Johnny. Okay. Um, Johnny, I had to give you the heart attack. I had to do oh, it. No. I had to hear your response on this show. I knew I should have went you first last coming. time. You know what's coming. Oh, your no. boys. DJ Moore, AJ Brown, and Juju Smith-Schuster. Why did I you have to do it, that? Johnny. I knew. Told me not to. Uh... <laughs> Okay, I am. Going, I want to hear I this cannot. from you because I know it's so hard for everybody yes. when they have all these guys that they love so much. How do you make these decisions? How do you really break it down? So I'm curious to hear how you would do this. All right, I'm going to start with who I'm trading first. Um, this hurts my heart. It's heavy on my heart, <laughs> but I just got to do. It. I just got to cut it off right now. Uh, for the for the sake of this, just for the sake of this clip, that's it. Um, but I would trade. AJ Brown right now because I believe that he has the most hype around his name um, and you could get the most value back for him. So I would trade him. I would cut Juju 
and I would keep DJ Moore because I think DJ Moore has the chance to be a top five wide receiver this year. So, um, and I, I am a little bit concerned about the volume in Tennessee, just a little bit, but I still think AJ Brown is a beast and he's going to be awesome and you need to draft him. And I would keep both of them somehow. I would figure a way out. I thought you were spot on when you said trade AJ Brown. I thought that was a great uh, call there. Uh, and then you had this all wrong when you went the other way. <laughs> you should definitely be keeping J Juju Smith-Schuster because he's tied to a quarterback we know can get wide receivers in the top five. Not we think. We know. Yeah. Uh, he's done it before multiple times. And so for me, Juju is locked into probably, if Big Ben's healthy and Juju's healthy, he's locked into probably 150 to 170 targets this year. Uh, in that offense, and that, for me, is why I'm keeping Juju. And I will cut, unfortunately, DJ Moore. Uh, even though I love DJ Moore, I love his talent, I just, there's too many questions within that offense. And as Johnny said, there's way more hype on A.J. Brown's name, which probably isn't rightfully so. There should be more hype on DJ Moore's name. He's further into his career. He's shown it more. And it, it, I think there's actually more questions about the Titans volume yeah, than there so. is the D than, than there is the Panthers volume as far as a passing attack. But uh, we have to talk about the market. What does the market say? And the market says AJ Brown uh, needs to be traded out of these three. That's not, that's Love good. It. Well, I got one more for you guys, and this is a great segment. I hope we keep doing this throughout the season, uh, especially as the stakes get higher. Yeah. Um, but this last one, I sort of went through. Um, yeah, next time I'm going to do three of your best players. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, speaking of, uh, I was sliding down through running back ADP and found a set of three running backs who are sort of in the same ADP uh, realm, but they seem like very different situational guys. And these three guys I'm talking about, maybe you'll know the names right away. One of them is new, new. I'm talking rookie new on a new team, new. One of them is old, old <laughs> and <laughs> on a new team. So that's sort of an exciting scenario. And one of them is uh, a second year player, but in a potentially new scenario. How the heck did Frank Gore get on this show, dude? <laughs> Not that old, old. Oh, okay. I'm talking about Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Kansas City Chiefs, okay. who's going at the, you know, second end of uh, second round spot. Miles Sanders with the Philadelphia Eagles and Todd Gurley of the wow, Atlanta okay. Falcons. This is Very good. different scenarios. Very mm -hmm. unpredictable. Yeah. I, yeah. This is this is a volatile set of three. So it's a, a good job, Chelsea, to pick yeah, all three. I love this one. Uh, this one got, gets me thinking. But I am going well, to... I woke up two hours early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no joke, go. huh? Uh, I am going to keep Clyde edwards Elaire, uh because he's tied to not only Andy Reid, who is has a history of uh, running backs doing really well and sticking with one running back when he, when he can, uh, and the things he said about CEH as far as being uh, similar to running backs that he's had before but better... Uh, I'm going to keep him. I think he's better here. I'm going to trade Miles Sanders away. Obviously, another guy whose value is super high right now, but is tied to an offense uh, that we have never really seen in Doug Peterson give the guy the rock for, uh, you know, Johnny's yelled at me multiple times for how many touches that Miles Sanders is going to get. Like, where's the math on that? And then I'm cutting Todd Gurley. This one's for me. He's probably the most volatile of these three, just based on his arthritic knee, based on the fact that he, you know, was non-existent in the passing game last year with the Rams. I know that they're saying that he's going to be existent in the passing game for the Falcons, but of these three, I'd say he's probably the most volatile. I'm going to go with those uh, keep trade cut. You you almost had this right. You almost had it. I can't believe you switched it up at the last second. Travis, this is a bromance episode, man. Come on. How are you going to – how is this going to be the bromance episode? And you're not going to go with your guy, Miles Sanders. That's the right answer. Listen, I understand that, like, I have my concerns with how is he going to get 250 touches, but – I'm more con I am more confident that he is going to get 200 plus touches than CEH is going to get 200 plus touches. Now, I do like CEH uh, quite a bit, and I understand he is tied to that offense, which is why I am trading CEH because I will make that argument to the person I'm trading. I will push him on that. I will say you're getting this great, great, great value when I don't can't guarantee that that's the value you're going to get. 
Um, with Miles Sanders, I've at least seen that he is a beast running back and that I know that that offense uh, will give him the rock um, behind a really good offensive line. Um, so I would I would keep Miles Sanders. I would trade CEH, and I would cut uh, Todd Gurley, unfortunately. I like him a lot this year, but that knee, like Travis said. So that I'll would... tell you what, Chelsea, I got to just applaud you because if you keep giving us these kind of sets, you're going to make Johnny go back on all of his takes like he just <laughs> did with Miles Sanders, and that's what I'm here for. So keep <laughs> it up with the keep trade cut uh, combos because that is what we need. We need Johnny eating crow on his takes. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Whisperers podcast. You can hear more from John and Travis on Google Play, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at TF Whisperers.